I know, I know, it's been a minute. I I'm sorry, okay? I, I died of a broken heart, so it took me a while to respawn. But I'm back now, at least for a little bit. So let's pretend like I didn't disappear for half a year and talk about Bendy and the Dark Revival. Wait, uh, sorry. Um, okay, I I'm a little out of practice. Uh, first, uh, let's talk about Bendy and the, the stink mach ink machine. Oh, okay, uh, how do you make videos again? Bendy and the Ink Machine was an inky, sticky horror game released in a little year known as 2017. This indie project slowly grew with people gaining interest from its unique art style, which resulted in some badasses much more talented and less lazy than myself pitching in and helping improve the game, which was just really cute to watch. The result was just a fun, good horror game and it garnered quite the fan base and was successful enough to get to get Legos. They have, they have bendy Legos. I, uh, I, I bought this Lego set for the sake of this video, but building it ended up being a tougher task than I thought, and I am currently digesting multiple Lego pieces. I really liked the first game, and the thing I enjoyed most about it was the story, which was basically all put together by the community with each chapter's release. What we have done is left it up to the community. So if you play the game and your your name is Matt Pat and you like to theorize, <laughs> there's a chance you're gonna figure things out. The result was a twisted story about a man with a bankrupt animation company trying to bring cartoons to life in order to to save his animation company. But to bring these cartoons to life, he had to use real humans slash human bodies slash souls slash double slash backslash HTTP the, the two dot things uh, uh, rule 34.com slash Pluto's rascal I spent a silly amount of time after finishing Benny and the Ink Machine watching these videos that were like game theory FNAF style fashion, trying to figure out who in these tapes that you listen to were turned into what inky gooey monsters you meet later on. Hi guys, it's Super Horror Bro Mike here, and today we'll be theorizing which character in Bendy and the Ink Machine has the tightest car to see. Be sure to click that like and subscribe button. I just really liked being able to play the game and put two and two together of like, oh, this person's talking, but later on they would be put in the ink machine and turn into this little thing. It, it was just the most interesting and fun part to me. It made the game stand out. So when Joey Drew Studios, the studio that made Bendy in the Ink Machine, and coincidentally is also the name of the animation studio in the game that made Bendy and the Ink Machine, announced a sequel with a whole new cast of characters as well as some returning characters, I got a little excited. Just the thought of seeing Boris again made my penis and my heart grow three sizes the day they announced Bendy and the Dark Revival. Everything that they have shown for the sequel just just looks good. I'm not seeing any red flags. Um, uh, I'm, I'm really curious as to where they're going to be taking things, especially with Bendy, because in these trailers, he looks a little less terrifying than I remember. But I don't have to wait any longer for my stupid, dumb, idiot brain questions to be answered, because, oh yeah, it's been out for weeks, and I played it weeks ago on stream on my second channel. Look, just... Uh, Give me a break, okay? I know it's been a minute. The game's just like there's YouTube and there's life and there's just, it's the videos here, okay? So, how was Bendy in the Dark Revival? Honestly, it's great. Kind of all I have to say. Basically, everything has been improved from the first game to the second game, and pretty drastically. The graphics, the art style, the combat, the puzzles... There's only one thing I can think of that hasn't been a complete improvement. And that means that I really don't have much to complain about, unlike some of my previous game reviews. This hopefully means, in comparison to my other reviews where I whine and bitch for hours on end in the audio and have to trim it down to a 
reasonable amount of, of, of viewing time, this, this video might be easier to make. Hopefully. I kind of need it to be the case. I, I'm currently doing college finals as I'm recording this audio, and I am too mentally drained to even get out of my bed, let alone do, do college things and make a, a, a game review and try not to Dark Souls roll off my apartment's balcony. Now, I did mention that there was one thing that they didn't really improve, and that is the story. I think I made it pretty clear that I liked the mystery that the first game had with, with who was who. And even though MatPat has already made a game theory on Bendy and the Dark Revival, this game is not nearly as theory or mystery driven as the first one was. I already knew this was going to be the case because the sequel wasn't released episodically, so there's no way for the fanbase to make up the story this time. And I was fine with that because there's still ways to add mystery and and make us try and figure things out through subtle environmental clues or through audio logs, but they didn't really do that this time around. Minor spoiler for uh, this example of what they could have done, but I wish they just kept the, the link that the character we play as and Joey Drew a, a secret, just, just didn't disclose that we had a connection with Joey Drew. That's all I'm going to say for the spoiler, I won't say the connection. Um, but it could have been explained through like subtle nods in, in the audio tapes or, or environmental storytelling. And then the community could have had this aha moment of realizing why we're so special. But instead it was just told through a cutscene. And the same thing goes for the creepy horny janitor. If they kept his link to the studio hidden and let us figure that out through audio tapes just like we figured out who turned into what monsters in audio tapes in the original game, it still kind of have that magic, and I just wish they went that route. But that's not even to say that the story here is bad. It's it's fine. It, it does exactly what it needs to, you know? It's, it's not Silent Hill 2 or Soma, but it, it's just a fine horror game story. And like I said, every other aspect of this game has been greatly improved. Especially the, the combat, which I'm super happy about. In the original, fighting was, was just not great. Now the combat honestly feels pretty good, which is important now especially because there's way more combat in this game than the first game. They also added a, a stealth takedown, which is just super satisfying. I, I really like this stealth takedown. And they also added a dash. Comboing the dash and then doing a stealth attack immediately afterwards because they cannot hear your dash it is, is basically the equivalent of sex. I, I mean, I, I think. The dash in specific it, it is great. Not only does it help with the combat, but it helps with puzzles and just traversing the world and adding little secrets that you can dash to. It's just a great addition. Speaking of traversing the world, the world that you traverse is great. It's beautiful. Uh, I really love the art style. It was unique in the first game and it's only gotten better. They really doubled down on it and you can tell that they have a, a talented team of, of artists and modelers and the lighting has been improved this time so now it just oh, I love it I love the visuals in this game they did a great job another thing that I'm I, I'm so happy to say is I experienced no major game breaking bugs or glitches after playing FNAF security breach and scorn which I'm still currently working on my hot ass review for it's it's uh, it's refreshing uh, that's that's all I'll say. I did not experience any bugs that affected my playthrough or prevented me from beating, uh, I don't know, maybe like a final boss or something. You know, something that I ran into in both of these games. Congratulations, Joey Drew Studios. You may be sacrificing real humans and, and, and putting their souls in an inky, dark, scary abyss, but you, you finish your games before you release them which is not common nowadays, so good job. So uh, yeah, that's kind of all I have to say, honestly. I don't really know how to end this. 
uh, I kind of forget how to do that, but you know, if, if you if you like Bendy and the Ink Machine, or if you just like horror games, Bendy and the Dark Revival is a great game. It's super fun, and with that, uh, I'm back, baby. Um, Merry Christmas.